Hey guys, this is Ben, and uh, I bet you don't remember this. It kind of looks like I'm playing a Half-Life 2 mod. I suppose, in a way, I am. This is Sin Episodes Emergence, and it was the first episodic game ever released. More or less. And I say that with a pinch of salt, That's because it. actually, I'm not sure now. if this counts as being episodic, online. because there was only ever one episode. Um, so this released back in 2006, just a few months before Half-Life 2 Episode 1 came out. And at that time, episodic gaming was all the conversation. There was a theory that every game would be episodic, that you would download and play two-hour chunks of a game once a week, once a month, rather than paying full price for a game and blasting through the whole thing in two days, or however long it takes you to play a game. And at the time, this was this was really exciting. Like I remember this being in, an incredibly interesting concept that basically completely failed, at least as far as first-person shooters, games like this are concerned, completely failed. So this is the only episode of Sin episodes that exists, and. It's really, really average. I think that's probably part of the reason it didn't go anywhere. And I remember being really excited to play this at the time. But looking back at it now with kind of modern sensibilities, it's just a Half-Life 2 mod. Like, it's, a, it's an impressive one. You know, they've completely retextured, new weapons, everything. But it just plays like... A Half-Life level, that's all it does. And while that may be fun, and um, Half-Life 2 is still, How in my this? mind, great fun to play, there. even as old as it is, but... That's all this is, there's nothing special about this at all. And I think that that was a real mistake. And... I mean, I'll talk a little bit later about the Half-Life episodes and, and other episodic games, but... This needed to be a lot more special than it is, and... I came back to it sort of thinking... You know, because I enjoyed playing this quite a lot when I was, well, when it was released. But I came into this thinking that I was going to find something kind of fun and nostalgic and be a bit like, oh, this was this was great, I remember this. And actually, yeah, I do remember this. And it's really dull. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm spoiled by modern That's gaming, by, you know, your Red Dead Redemption and your God of War and all these sorts of things, but... There's just nothing special going on here. Like, okay, you've got secondary fire on your weapons. Um, yeah, Half-Life 2 did that. There is a mechanic a little later on um, where you can sort of surround yourself with a cloud of gas that slows down time. Um, I mean, that wasn't particularly original even when this came out, if you think about something like Max Payne, let alone, uh, let alone sort of game-sellingly original. Um, I think step. we're about to come up on one of those famous source lab. engine loading screens as well. Remember these? Yeah, there we go. That's classic gameplay right there. Listen, Roddick's the only one that knows so, that injected with Blade. You just find him. This make him talk. had a couple of features, and I'm not sure how many of them were complete fabrication. Um, and how many was of genuine attempts to try something. But there were a couple of things that they, they thought using the episodic format. And they were trying to make things, you know, not just ch cut a game into chunks and release it, but actually use the episodic format to, it, to an advantage. So they were planning on having sort of variations in the story and variations in the game depending upon choices that the players had made throughout the previous episode, not just necessarily uh, story decisions. Um, although I think they were pl they were planning that as well. So they were planning that, say, for an example, for example, if the player made a particular choice at the end of an episode, basically the most popular choice would be what was considered canon for the second episode. I mean, there's problems with that straight away because if you make the slightly less popular choice, you're just not going to be satisfied. And I think that had that gone forward, that would have led to complaints and they would have had to find some way to reverse that decision. Um, they would also be looking at things like which weapons were popular. Apparently there were a lot of stats that they tracked in the, uh, in the development of this game um, and uh, through the players of this game. 
they would track what weapons people were using, they would track um, you know, what kind of items they picked up, how often they used health, everything, and they would use that to inform the design of future episodes, which leads into and blends in with the other feature, which was, um, again, supposedly, I don't know how true it is, but there was supposedly quite an advanced um, sort of dynamic difficulty feature in this game, which would basically mean that the AI would act differently, respond differently, use different tactics and equipment based on how good you were. So the kind of the metric for that was how long does it take the player to complete an episode? And what they uh, what they tried to do was make it so that a player who is you know very highly skilled and someone who hasn't got a clue would finish the episode in roughly the same amount of time. Um, I think I can, I, you know, I can respect that to a degree, although I'm not sure how much I agree with the concept that how long it takes you to something, uh, how long it takes you to complete something is representative of either how hard it was or how much you enjoyed it. I feel like those are maybe different things, but I can respect the, uh, the attempt to try that, certainly. Um, here I am, you can see me sort of bumbling around in combat. I'm really not used to Source Engine combat these days. It's still very, um... Oh, there we go, I died. Uh, it doesn't feel very impactful anymore. Not in the days of, um... Aim down sights and... You know, the kind of the modern... Gameplay techniques that we're used to. This all feels very, kind of... Stiff. Um, still enjoyable. Oh yeah, I remember this. Um, obviously this is a post-commentary, but this... I thought this was a puzzle, this door. Because you can open it, but then... By the time you get to it, it closes again. Um, I'll probably fast-forward this a little bit because it's incredibly tedious, but... I tried uh, quite a few times to get to that door, and... You can't get there. It's impossible. And the one time I finally managed to get a look in, it's just error textures behind it, so there's... Clearly nothing there, it's just a red herring to waste people's time. Which obviously annoyed me. Now this scene here is very Half-Life. This is a bit more of a peaceful scene, exploring a lab. Some experimentation's been going on, basically, on the human guards. Um, you'll see what happens. Yeah, and again, this is the kind of game design that in the late 90s, the original Half-Life, was incredibly impressive. Little storytelling moments. By this time, even, this kind of stuff was a little bit... Eh. We've seen this. Again, there's just nothing super original happening here. This is all just so Half-Life. So the concept of episodic gaming started, really, with this game, and Half-Life 2 Episode 1 carried it on. And as I say, there was a period where this was going to be the future, and it wasn't long before Half-Life 2 Episode 2, um, which came and sort of continued that. But really, episodic gaming didn't truly begin Another until Telltale, the control panel, um, boss. now sadly destroyed, um, Telltale and their original series of The Walking Dead which was an absolutely phenomenal experience, and, and here's the thing, it was made much better by being an episodic game. What they tried to do with this and with the Half-Life episodes was just take a game and chop it to bits. What Telltale did, and the reason that was so successful, was because they actually designed with the episodic concept in mind. It helped, of course, that The Walking Dead, although the game was based on the comic, is known for being a TV series, but The Walking Dead game very much took on the format of a TV series. So you had a TV episode. Okay, it was a bit longer than your usual episode of TV, probably about as long as a film it would usually take you to, um, to play through an episode. So effectively, you have five films of The Walking Dead per series. And those were phenomenal. And... They did, they, they dealt with this concept of player choice and sort of players affecting the story much, much better by just remembering your decisions. And 
allowing what you that did, did to impact side, your Both version of events. Or at least, down. you know, made you feel like you impacted on events. Um, in reality, if you actually look at kind of the flowcharts of the Walking Dead games, the amount of choice you actually get, barring a few fairly major decisions, the amount of choice you actually get is nowhere near what it appears to be. But that illusion of choice makes the episodic format worthwhile. The episodic concept, in my opinion at least, is a great idea. I mean, The Walking Dead was phenomenal. Uh, the Walking Dead Season 2 was also fantastic. The third season, I never actually finished. Um, Tales from the Borderlands, in particular, is my favourite Telltale game. If you've not played that, I super recommend that. It's just hilarious. But, as an adventure game, as a puzzle game, as a story-driven game, episodic works. It doesn't seem to have worked here, and I think it's telling that this hasn't really been tried since. Certainly not with this type of game. It just doesn't seem to be a good fit for Episodic, and unfortunately, this and Half-Life 2 were the best that we got in terms of trying to prove that that could work, and for me, it really didn't. Would I recommend going back to this? I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to say, actually, yeah, you know what? This was flawed, but fun, and worth picking up for what, probably a pound on the Steam sales, I'm guessing, but I assume it's basically free. Um, as it stands, there are better Half-Life 2 mods that you can play. Um, that is my honest opinion, unfortunately. It's okay. It's alright. It tried. Um, it was a failure. Much like the episodic concept. I mean, these days, who's even doing episodic games? Um, the only one I can think of is Life is Strange. Life is Strange 2. I haven't actually played those, but um, I'd be interested to give them a go. I think I'd probably enjoy them. So in conclusion, you probably don't remember Sin Episodes Emergence, and you probably shouldn't either. Sorry. So this is a new series that I'm going to be trying a few episodes of. Just going through old games that maybe you don't remember, maybe your memory's a little hazy. See if they're still worth going back to now in uh, the year of our Lord 2019. Perhaps, perhaps not. For Sin episodes, it's a definite not. But maybe we'll find something else in the future. If you enjoyed this video, um, first of all, thank you very much. I would love for you to show me that you enjoyed it with a like. If you feel like subscribing to uh, catch the next episode of this or anything else, please do. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments. Share your video with a friend. Do all the social media things that you're supposed to do. That would be brilliant. Um, until next time, I'll see you later.